What motivates someone to become a beekeeper? Can anyone do it? Is there a special relationship between the bees and the beekeeper? And can we do anything to help save the bees? Let's find out the answers to these questions and more. Join me as we meet the beekeeper. My name is Herman Perilla. I've been a beekeeper for probably close to 35 years or a little more. I met this lady, her name is Melanie Audron, and she was the beekeeper at the Maryland University. And she was introduced to beekeeping in Colombia. So since I am from Colombia, I happened to meet her and that was an instant connection, a personal connection that I still have today. We still talk and uh, share many things. And she was the one that actually gave me the opportunity because in life everything is an opportunity. If you have it and you take care of you, your opportunity, then you make something of it. Something was said about, uh, I don't know, I was over talking to him across the fence and he had these hives sitting there and something was said about, well, he's going to throw them away. I said, throw them over the fence. And I got them and put bees in them. Fred is a master beekeeper. He's one of the few master beekeepers in the state. Okay, I have a scientific curiosity. Yes. Uh, I am a biologist. At that point, I was studying ecology. I was very interested in etology, which is animal behavior. And when I met the hive, the bees, that was the hook. And I never changed my focus out of the bees. Gutenberg. Um, I'm a PhD student right now in the geography department studying earth systems and geoinformation sciences. Um, so I do remote sensing of wetlands mostly. My background is in environmental science so my undergraduate is environmental science and I have a master's in agroecology. So I've always been interested in sustainable agriculture and um, so personally that kind of translates into homesteading and self-sufficiency and local food and seeking a mentor before I, I ran into Fred and I was talking with folks at work and uh, Hannah told me about her dad so I reached out to her dad mm. and then uh, it turns out he wasn't available for the uh, when I was going to expect to get my bees and uh, I told Hannah when they were coming in and she asked if she was like I said hey would you would you like to come and be a part of got interested in the beekeeping class when I first heard about it. Bees have always been kind of interesting to me, but honestly, I used to be pretty afraid of them. Um, once I got started with working with them, I became just really interested in how docile they actually are. So working with them and knowing that I used to be so fearful of them and then understanding how they actually work was just really kind of a big interest of mine. Um, I feel like they're very misunderstood from someone who doesn't know them and then being able to actually work with them and see how amazing and incredible they are just made created this huge shift for me. So I've learned a lot from the bees themselves and I feel like I've been able to teach other people a lot about them just based on the knowledge that I've been given, literally just one-on-one -on -one with them. Um, so they've. We, I've created a very special relationship with them just because of the work I've done and I felt like I've been able to transfer that to other people. Hewitt, 
of Richland Honeybees. I've been a beekeeper about nine years. Um, my dad and I grew up beekeeping together. We, well, we grew up breeding bugs and reptiles together. So we've bred tarantulas and snakes and all sorts of cool things like that. Um, so my dad is definitely my inspiration as far as beekeeping goes. I moved to California um, for school and my dad had gotten some hives while I was away, more like a, as a hobby. And by the time I'd come back, it looked a little bit like this. So, so I've just uh, joined his side and been beekeeping with him ever since. I got into beekeeping, I would say almost 30 years ago now. I was in the outback of Australia and we planted a garden and we were literally in the middle of nowhere. and. I didn't have any produce from my efforts that fall when, when it came time to harvest. The bushes of, of blueberries bloomed and the strawberries bloomed, but I didn't get any harvest. So that told me right there that we didn't have any pollinators. And that was a real smack in the face to me thinking, oh my gosh, with a world without pollinators really means no food for me. And so my next door neighbor who was sort of the mayor of this little community brought bees and taught me beekeeping. And I was instantly attracted to these wonderful creatures and the next year I had a harvest. So it was pretty black and white for me to see the benefits of having the pollinators on hand to pollinate our fruits and vegetables. I love seeing their little faces looking up from above. I'm just going like this. And it means they're not buzzing me. I think that I have a connection with this. I am able to communicate with them. They can, in a way, talk to me, and in a way, I can actually establish a dialogue with them. So um, it is a very pleasant, a very relaxing, and very, if you would, intimate relationship. I open the colony, and it draws my attention completely, and I just block the wall, and my world becomes, my universe becomes that colony there, but I am seeing and I am analyzing that I should uh, think for the point of view of what is going on in science and what is going on as the society is evolving in that. I really enjoy working the bees at the end of the day after all the commotion sitting in traffic. It's kind of my zen moment to just simply listen to it, opening that hive and getting that first waft of the honey and hearing that hum and being able to sense their mood and their relationship with me. Are they happy to see me? Are they wishing I would just close up and go away? And I feel like I'm very much in tune with that now. And so I can have a sense that, no, this is not ideal for them. And by their behavior, say, okay, girls, another day and come back. Um, I really believe um, they have a, a message for us. Today I caught a swarm here on Prince William County Landfill, which I look as a christening or a good karma moment for our project here. I did not, for the first time in nine years, come through winter with hives, which was a shock to me because I consider myself um, in tune with my bees and, and knowledgeable. And so I had a swarm last weekend, which provided me with bees to continue my bees in schools lessons in the classroom. So to me, that was a message from the bee say, we like what you're doing, keep at it. And um, I thank them for that. I thank them for all of um, the quiet moments they give me and appreciation for all the good work that they do. They put the food on our table. <laughs> Bees in a box.